Hi, I'm Kevin Gillis, and we're back inside. It's uh, certainly not as cold out now. It's, uh, the ice actually went off the lake this week, and but they're still doing some maple syrup. In fact, my friend Jimmy and his brother Terry brought over, I can't show you the front because it looks like a bottle of rum, but it's uh, fresh maple syrup from their property next door. And I'm gonna enjoy it with my granola tomorrow morning. Thank you, Jimmy and Terry. So today we're gonna to talk a little bit about storyboards. And a storyboard is actually kind of like the blueprint for shooting a television show, whether it be you know, a film, live action, or animation. And it's kind of like a comic book, except that you break down all the scenes and what the angles are going to be, and uh, you put in the dialogue. And I'm gonna do some close-ups for you, but uh, this opening scene is actually obviously a train, and it's from the show End of the Line. So we can see some of the raccoons there. Crew, a crew of bears is they're busy fixing up the station because Cyril says, what are you doing? I'm gonna cut over. Going into hibernation. Going into hibernation. And he grabs the broom and he starts to, of course the bear falls over. And just to give you an idea what would happen here as you know, he's trying, he's waiting for Mammoth to come here in three days and Sneer Industries is rolling out the red carpet. So he kicks the carpet and we start to follow the action. The bear sees the carpet rolling towards him. He gets off screen as quick as he can. Another bear is coming the other way and they smack in and, you know, the storyboard is sometimes used to make sure not only that the angles are all gonna cut together well, but that we're gonna have a gag. Oops, I jumped the page. We'll see what comes up next. Well, we cut to another scene. And Cedric is, he's busy writing in his black book. And the pigs are all getting together as well. They've done it. They're so excited. They've created the product that is going to impress Mammoth. And we'll see an action here. Camera starts on one guy and opens up to be tighter on Lloyd to Floyd. And then as he reveals a continuous series of smaller, different colored boxes inside of boxes, can be all special effects, the bear sweeping the ground. And the boxes that the pig is Discarding, they land followed by smaller, different colored boxes, and the bear growls at the pig. He gives a little uh, cheesy grin back, nervously. Cyril's hand comes in and grabs the atomizer. Sniffs the spray from the atomizer. We're a tight shot on, on Cyril. And we go over to tight shot on the pig. Just kind of, isn't it subtle? What's it made out of? It's a carefully guarded secret, passed on from generation to generation. Anyway, I don't need to tell you the whole story. If you haven't seen it, tune it in. It's episode 51. The pigs are, uh, they screw things up as usual. I want to show you one special thing, and that is the original storyboard from the Christmas Raccoons. And it's right here. It kind of shows you once upon a time, far away, in a sea of stars, there floated one lone peaceful Christmas tree with one lone ornament shimmering on it. And we actually, if you recall on the opening of the show, we zoom in. And it's actually a map of North and South America. We zoom in closer to North America and the Evergreen Forest. And we can see here Dan the Ranger's cabin. Julie and Tommy being put to bed. And at the same time, we're missing panel seven. I have no idea where it is, but hopefully it'll show up soon. And we see the raccoons at the same time. They're in the raccoon dominium. Ralph is reading the paper, talking to Bert. Bert looks very collegiate with his uh, brown turtleneck. And Melissa is pouring coffee for all of them. Tree mystery continues. And if we jump forward, we see Schaefer grabbing the sneers. 
Cedric on the right, Cyril on the left, Ralph Raccoon in the bottom, and of course they have lost their home. This is, it's more, rather than being a, uh, a full-on storyboard, it's more of a pitch storyboard that we would take out when we were pitching, you know, the different sponsors and broadcasters and investors in the original shows. I would take this out. So uh, I did find it recently, and uh, I think it's kind of cool. The, you'll notice one thing for sure, that Cyril is actually gray. He's got brown ears. He doesn't quite look the same, and uh, that design was done by John Bianchi back in about 1978. And then Paul Shibley uh, revised Cyril and the Raccoons and brought their new colors to them. So it's kind of a co-production between uh, John Bianchi and Paul Shibley. I hope you enjoyed this little piece about storyboarding. It's actually one of my favorite parts of the whole animation process. It's the time that the director and the animation director, the producer, the storyboard artist and the editor can uh, take a look at the moving comic and uh, make sure that our scenes are all going to connect well together, cut well together, uh, that we've got proper framing and that uh, any gags that we're pulling out there are going to actually pay off or, or not. In any case, uh, we've got lots more to come uh, about what happened in the uh, behind the scenes on producing the raccoons, and I hope to share a lot more of that with you very soon. Uh, thanks so much for, uh, for being here. I've got my maple syrup. I'm uh, gonna have that for breakfast tomorrow morning uh, with my granola and my yogurt. In the meantime, I'm just gonna see if there, if you can see any parts of the lake out there, the water, because the ice went out a couple of days ago and it's spring is coming. And it's a wonderful time. Talk to you soon. Take care.